Hi, this is Dina for Split Coast Stampers. In today's video, I'm going to share a few different ways that you can create mono prints using pigment inks. Mono printing is basically printing a one of a kind painting. All of the coloring and the work is done on a non porous surface with paint or ink and then transferred to paper. I'm going to be using a large acrylic block for this example, and that's also used in our photo tutorial by Julie Warner. I'm using these color box petal point inks, which are beautiful pigment inks, and I'm going to do a layered print. So I'll start by just inking up the entire block in the lightest blue that I have here. When you do layered prints, it works best to work from light to dark. So the lighter colors show through where we add texture or take away ink. I've got the block covered and I'm going to take my cardstock and lay it down onto the block and then press around the full panel to make sure that I get a good coverage. Here I'm using a craft knife to lift up the corner of the panel and you'll want to make sure to lift it without sliding it across more ink so you preserve your print. So there's my first layer and for the next layer I'm going to use a darker shade of blue and cover the panel. But this time I want to add some texture to the ink by lifting some of it away. So I'm going to lay this piece of bubble wrap into the ink and the ink is going to stick to the plastic and pull away. I'll take another print, pressing around really well. And you can see where the bubble wrap pulled up the darker ink and the lighter ink shows through. I'm covering the block with my darkest blue ink now. And I'm going to use these texture tools to add some wave patterns to the ink. And these are just inexpensive children's art tools. You don't need anything fancy. One more print. And again, you can see how the earlier layers peek through those waves and add depth to the print. These inks dry really slowly, so I had enough ink left to take another print as well. Here's another example, and for this one I'm going to start with a yellow base. I wanted to add texture with a bubble wrap, and because it still had blue ink stuck to it from before, I was able to transfer that back and create a colored pattern instead of a negative pattern. I can also use the inks to stamp right onto the block. So here I'm creating a single layer design instead of taking multiple prints to create a design. And this one is really a true mono print. This time I'm using the handle of one of my tools to make sure I lift up all the ink. You could use an old credit card as well. Just anything that would help you get full coverage on your panel. Then I noticed that I missed a spot here. So I was able to line up my card again and pick up that area that didn't get inked. For this print, I liked that bubble wrap accident, so I did that again. And then I inked up a large background stamp to add a full pattern to the print. If you use a large stamp like this, you'll want to be sure that you don't slide it on the block, and that would be really easy to do with all this ink that's on there already. I'm switching now to my jelly plate to try the inks out on that surface. These jelly plates didn't exist when our photo tutorial was made back in 2009, but they are a really great way to get a mono print. And because they give a little bit, you can use other tools like embossing folders and stencils to add depth to your prints. So I'm making up with a yellow first, and I'm going to press into it with this clear background stamp. And that pulls ink away, and that will add texture to our base layer. I'm going with green next, and to that layer I'm going to press in this embossing folder. And this is one that was too big for my machine when I got it, so I cut it in half and I use it for gel printing. I love how that looks. I'm 
For the final layer, I'm going to cover the plate with this darkest brown ink and lay a stencil over the plate and then use a tool to press into the jelly plate and pick up that brown ink in the stencil openings. Love how clear that comes out. After I pull the stencil away, there's still ink on the plate where the stencil was covering. So I'll take a print again and I have a second ghost print to use as a background. I've inked up the plate with brown again and I have my already inked background stamp. And that prints the background right into the ink like I did on the acrylic block. I'll press that down all over. And there is another background idea. I've always thought that pigment inks needed to be heat embossed or they would never dry. But I learned from our friends at Clear Snap that they can also be heat set with an iron. And the best way to do that is to lay the inked up panel under a paper towel and then run a hot iron over it for about 30 seconds. I honestly have avoided pigment inks for years because I'm terrible at heat embossing and I'm so grateful to know this little trick. I hope I've given you lots of ideas for mono printing with pigment ink and I thank you so much for watching.